Hey guys, welcome back to the video series. Today we're talking about, you guessed it, influencer marketing again. You know, I never really understood the media's obsession with the topic. Uh, maybe obsession is too dramatic of a word. Maybe it's fascination or intrigue, but I get it. Beautiful models, abs, posing on the beach, by the pool, products front and center. It drives headlines, it drives clicks, it drives traffic, and it drives conversation. And some of the recent narratives that I've seen in the media really revolve around a couple different areas. The future of influencer marketing post COVID-19, the growth of influencer marketing, CMOs investments and or marketing organizations investments into influencer marketing, also the decline of influencer marketing, the fact that it is dead and doesn't work. And then of course you have all the how to's, how to measure, how to integrate, how to maximize, how to identify the right influencers. And one narrative that I often see missing is technology and B2B influencers. Call me biased, I've been working in this field for a long time and I think some B2B companies are doing some pretty innovative things, but I very rarely see the media writing about it. They don't talk about B2B influencer marketing as much as I'd like them to. And to prove or disprove my point, I decided to look at some data as usual and without going super deep, I looked at all coverage of influencer marketing since 2015. That's about five and a half years worth of media data. And I just want to make a few points before we jump into this. Uh, one is the data consists of only coverage where influencer marketing is in the headlines and the data set is predefined. In other words, I only pulled data from the top 250 media publications. So sites like AdAge, AdWeek, DigiDay, Marketing Profs, CMO.com and others like that are in this data set. Now, some of you may ask, well, why are you only looking at headlines? And I do have a reason. And guess what? There's a video on that. Since January 2015, there have been over 3,000 articles written on the topic of influencer marketing. And despite the spikes and valleys of coverage, you can see that it's trending up until about February 2020. That's when COVID-19 really started to dominate the media. And then I decided to do what I call a narrative mapping exercise, which basically segments all the sub narratives covered by the media as it relates to influencer marketing. An easy way to look at this is that these are all the key words that were also written in the headlines alongside with influencer marketing. Now you can see here that how to coverage and social networks coverage is pretty much leading in terms of volume. Now social networks coverage represents headlines that also had a specific social channel like Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, TikTok within the headline itself. The only channel not in this data set is LinkedIn, since I called that out separately, as you can see here. Now, most of these narratives are pretty self-explanatory, but I did want to call out that only 2% of all this coverage mentions B2B. I should also call out that the media publications that did mention and cover B2B were those like Marketing Profs, Social Media Today, Business to Community, CMS Wire, and Marketing Land. So the next logical question is why? Why doesn't the media write about B2B influencer marketing like they do for consumer brands and companies? And this is a question that I really can't answer with data. I can only make some assumptions. So my first assumption is that they just don't care. Maybe they don't think B2B influencer marketing is even a thing or that it's boring, unsexy, or that it's just media relations and PR. My second assumption is that they just don't know that it's a thing. Some people just don't know what they don't know. I'd like to address both starting with the second one first. B2B influencer marketing is a thing and has been for many years. And personally, I do think it's kind of sexy. Um, now, B2B influencers may not have abs, but well, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe some do and let's move on. Actually, everybody has abs. You just can't see them on some people. Now, I do realize that I live in a bubble. Living in Silicon Valley, I'm surrounded by some of the most innovative technology software companies on the planet. Salesforce, Oracle, Adobe, SAP, Intel, NVIDIA. And I can pretty much guarantee you that all of them do some form of influencer marketing, not to be confused with influencer relations. Influencer relations is media relations. It's when PR pros apply the same approach to influencers as they would traditional media. Essentially they are pitching influencer marketing in this context is about using data and analytics to identify and research influencers, organic engagement. And yes, there is a video on that and then paid activation, no video yet, but one is coming. But here's the thing that I often talk about quite a bit. Influencer marketing in technology and business isn't always about a campaign or an event or a moment. You can have a very successful program simply by listening and researching uh, various influencer groups. Now, sadly, that won't get you on the front page of the New York Times. Now, regarding my first assumption that the media doesn't care, maybe that's a little harsh. 
I think it's more about that they don't know how big it is. And anecdotally, I can tell you that there are millions of dollars spent on B2B influencer marketing every year. And that investment is skyrocketing, especially since COVID-19 pandemic. Why? Most B2B companies attend industry events after industry event. They have their own customer events because that's what fuels their sales pipeline for six to 18 months in the future. Since COVID-19, everything has been canceled. South by Southwest, Mobile World Congress, and hundreds, if not thousands, customer events. And technology companies were and continue to scramble to find new and innovative ways to activate events and generate leads. And guess what? B2B influencers are center stage. And that, my friends, concludes our time together today. I hope that you and your families are doing well during these turbulent times. Please be safe. Please be healthy. And I'll see you next time.